When working with Vector, there's always certain ailments that come to play when you're wanting your tools to do a certain thing. And to fix this and or utilize the power of Affinity Designer, you can use a snapping tool. And the snapping tool is defined as this horseshoe magnet looking thing at the top. If you were to click on it, it will be activated. But underneath the hood is quite a few options. Snapping in particular for my own use is awesome for UI design or icon design, something that you need exact coordinates for, very fitting. Um, there's also presets ready to go out of the box if you don't want to take the time to configure all these things. The UI design preset I really like. Uh, this one kind of gives you guaranteed whole pixels as you draw a shape or of some sort. It also can give you guides if you weren't to create a shape similar to the first one you created and you'll have helpers as you see right here, real-time guides. Uh, so that's kind of a nifty thing. It's very useful when you're trying to create things of a similar size, similar design, uh, so you can just continue to draw things just in a more efficient manner. So that's how snapping really ultimately helps you do these. The tool here is to move by whole pixels. This one is to force pixel alignment. Those are just kind of toggles for its settings within the actual snapping settings itself. You can untoggle that by clicking that, vice versa for this one. Say we were doing just a page layout, something similar to maybe like publication. It's a little less forceful in using snapping, but it still offers guides and helpers when you do create shapes and or align to other things on the page. You notice as I drag that shape out though, these coordinates are half pixels. So that if we were to go to pixel preview, that's gonna show pretty fuzzy when we get down to smaller sizes. Case in point, if you were to want to draw those shapes in a more rigid fashion, definitely uh, go ahead and use utilize one of these presets and or just mock its settings and create your own preset. You can do that here. It's pretty easy to do once you just start kind of making your own adjustments on these. So again, to illustrate, you'll see those pixel dimensions are exact, which is nice. And you can go ahead and create a new one just by alt click and dragging or draw a new shape that's very similar in size. It will tell you how far away it is from the other shape. If you want an exact shape, you can continue to mess with that or you can activate your grid and set that up accordingly. So if we really wanted to be nitpicky about this shape, we can start at a corner of one of these crossing grids and we'll do the same here. So now it's 100 by 100 pixel squares and they're all exactly the right size and distance from each other. And this one I should have just draw like so. Let's see. One more thing to discuss is candidates, and these are essentially what exists on your document. You can define different, I would call these just different uh, strength levels uh, in the sense that you can just use the candidate list and set specific maximums. If, if you're really interested in showing specific things that you want to be snappable as opposed to other shapes. So in this case, if we have four, shapes and you'll notice if it is snappable and I have this activated you can show and hide the snapping candidates this is kind of just a helper in case you do have that minimum and these will all be relative to each other as opposed to other shapes on the page once you reach your maximum so right now we have four watch the first shape on the left when I draw one more it disables itself as a candidate but if I select it it creates itself as a candidate. If I hover over it for a long time, it does the same thing. It's kind of a nifty tool. It can also get very, I would say, confusing in my own workflow. So I, I would use it with a grain of salt, but it, the feature is there if you want it. I would probably leverage the presets myself, just keep things kind of the immediate layers. It's kind of a, a less involved approach. And then you can, increase this if you really want more control and activate all layers. But as your project grows, that kind of gets cumbersome. So definitely take that with a grain of salt as well. If it's immediate layers here, you can't even set a maximum. So if you were to want to set one, it would have to be candidate list. And these all others are the ones you can't even set. So 
that's just kind of showing by example there. In my own work, I typically do UI design unless it's strictly illustration, then sometimes I won't even use snapping. Uh, other times I will use this curve drawing preset. So if you're interested in using snapping in your own project, it's pretty easy to get going with. Like I said, the presets are probably where to stick for now if you're not familiar with the, how everything works. But uh, other than that, feel fr free to tweak these to your liking. There's quite a few uh, settings here that I really like. The force pixel alignment's great if you want to keep shapes exact sizes. Snapping to grid is great if you are doing something that has to be the same height and width, etc. Same is true for guides. If you're into web design and you want, say, to contain all of your content within a rigid grid of some sort, it's a good uh, place to start. The spread is essentially the artboard in this case, so you can add that snap too. So if we were to draw a shape, you notice it's kind of snapping itself to the edge over here. Uh, you see it kind of do that as well as I move one other one. And that's essentially an overview of snapping in Affinity Designer.